coming live from our studios at Newsvine. You are watching Deep Thought. Welcome to the show. With me in the studio today is Dr. Foster. Dr. Foster is here to discuss the technology behind remote neural monitoring. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Deep Thought, and thank you for having me on the show. Doctor, first off, what exactly is remote neural monitoring? Remote neural monitoring refers to a broad range of technologies which, when combined, can be used to both manipulate and extract information from the human body. What makes this system different from the reports of extracting images and words from the human brain using technologies such as fMRI? fMRI requires that subjects be inserted in a specialized machine. Remote neural monitoring employs radio waves and can work hundreds or thousands of miles away. This sounds too incredible to believe. Electrical impulses can cause nerves to fire. Exercise equipment such as Slender don't demonstrate this. But how does radio work? Radio is electricity in a different form. Nerve endings are surrounded in a plasma that convert the radio energy into biological signals. Normally these signals would be meaningless and filtered out by the brain, but when they match the neural firing patterns of the brain, they are processed as information. Reading information from the brain relies on the fact that the plasma will modify the return signal of a radio wave in a detectable manner. This will encode the state of the electrical activity and from this we can extract information such as sights, sounds, feelings, thoughts and more. Dr. Foster, I am astounded at this. In terms of mind control, is this possible? If you subscribe to the fact that we are a product of brain activity, then directing that brain activity would mean that a human could be driven as effectively as a car or UAV. Do you have any idea of what frequencies are involved? Studies have shown that cell phone frequencies modify brain activity, but this would be meaningless and filtered out by the brain. It would cause mild sensory delays and confusion. Our proper system would employ brief pulses, of very low signal strength, typically confined below 1 GHz. It would be very hard to see and decode. Can it be defended against? Current studies have reduced the effect of the signal, but it can penetrate shielding fabrics. At present, there is no defense available to civilians. Dr. Foster, I would like to thank you for your time and expertise in this matter. I hope you will come back and expand upon this at some point. I would also like to thank our viewers for their time. For now, this is Deep Thought logging off.